We welcome UFC fighter and expert Alan <laughs> Joban to the show. What's good up, back man? In here, man. Good. Oh, man, it's a pleasure yeah. to have you. Big weekend, UFC 247. Really good fights, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, you talk about a competitive main event and then a, a massive full cool main event. Yeah, Jones, Reyes, was this robbery, man? What do you think? I didn't see it that way. I didn't see it that way. A lot of people were up in arms about the way that the decision went right here. Yeah. But if you really take a look at this fight, Jones was able to close out the fight, every, the rounds and the later rounds. It's the not really- The championship rounds. Well, the championship, championship rounds, rounds but yeah. also the, 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 the end of every early round. Reyes definitely came out Guns blazing in one round one pretty favorably. Rounds two and three were a lot closer than people actually saw. And, and, and I think that's what made the decision in the judges' cards right here. Reyes every round came out and unmistakably won the first 90 seconds of round two and three. But it was the way that he ended these rounds that swayed the judges to think maybe this went the other way. And that's why I, was, I wasn't quite sure. Jones also got some takedowns. He didn't do a tremendous amount of damage. But when you finish the round stronger than you started and you get a takedown, it leaves the judges questioning what actually happened. Four and five are definitely for John Jones, but I saw this as a very closely contested fight, not a robbery in any way. Yeah, but one of the judges had four rounds to Jones. Gave one round to Reyes. It's, That's a little off, right. no? It, it, it sounds very crazy, and I agree. I would not have watched that fight and, and in my right mind said, four rounds to one, that, that's impossible. But again, as I said, Jones definitely got four and five. Reyes definitely got one. Two and three were up in the air. So if a judge did say, you know what, two and three went to John Jones, that's where he got that. But you know what, you've got to give Reyes credit. The, the, we've never really seen John Jones under that amount of pressure. John Jones likes to fight his fight at range, keeping you at bay, stalking you around the octagon. He wasn't able to do that the majority of the fight against Reyes, and that's why he had so much success against John Jones. You know what we learned, too, is that uh, Jones could take a punch, man. Yeah. Reyes landed an uppercut, some good kicks. He really brought Reyes the fight, man. Reyes is a man. big, strong, athletic yeah. guy, and the thing that's so brilliant about John Jones, not is he's a brilliant fighter, but the man's never been knocked out. And so once you've been knocked out, once you've had that concussion, you're more susceptible to getting concussions later on over and over right. again. But if you're the champion like John Jones and you've never even been knocked out, he still has that, that young man chin, even though he's getting older. So he's hard. He has a very good chin on him. Do we see a rematch? I think he deserves it, 100%, especially right. with him not getting the nod and the majority of the fans thinking that he did enough to get it. I think they should give him one. The problem is this weekend there's another fight in the same division, people that it's a possible contender fight. So okay. we have to see what happens yeah. this weekend to see how that fight ends. But if if things don't happen this weekend that, that change the outcome of it, I think Reyes definitely deserves it. We haven't really seen Jones uh, under that kind of pressure in quite a while. Gusterson was the last man to do it years and years ago. Uh, and and, and he was able to bang John Jones up, but uh, Reyes coming in there with a big body, the athletic build, and he said, look, I've got better boxing than John Jones, and he showed that he was able to prove it in this fight. He did, man. I mean, J Jones kept moving forward, but he kept getting hit. I had it three rounds to two. You're the expert, but I had it three rounds to two, Reyes, and I think it was a matter of to, to be the man, you got to beat the man. And he exactly. didn't necessarily beat Jones, but it, it was close, man. It could have went either way. I did have it, Reyes, but what's next for John Jones? John Jones, I mean, yeah. with this win right here, he cemented his legacy in the UFC. He has the most title wins ever. I believe he just passed George St. Pierre with 13 now. So he's in, a, he's in history books. You know, he, he, he's, he's probably the GOAT. Uh, and, and, you know, before this fight, he was kind of talking about going up to heavyweight, testing the waters. He wanted to see how he would do against Stipe, right. the heavyweight champion right now. After this fight, I don't think he needs to go up to heavyweight. Okay. He, he looked good, but you're seeing that the division is finally catching up with him. This man that has never been beaten. So you're thinking really Adesanya? I, well, Adesanya is somebody that's on the radar, yeah. to be honest. And I know they're I, both talking smack the, back and forth. There's a bunch of great stuff going on back and forth with him, and I know Adesanya's a friend of the show right, right here. Right. I love watching him fight. He's got style. He's got swagger. He could talk. He could fight. He could do it all. But John Jones is a much bigger man. John Jones has a tremendous cut to make uh, light heavyweight. Uh, Adesanya could do middleweight very easily. I think they would be, uh, if they had a catchweight, that would be the only way to do it. But I think John Jones would be too big of a man for Adesanya. But it's something to keep down in a pipeline for a big fight that the UFC might need later on. I'm just happy to see Jones fighting again, man. I mean, yes. you know, for this guy to get back to where he is, to be back to the point he is after the life he's led, fantastic. And, and look, this he, he he had a clean, you're not hearing anything in, 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 uh, about John Jones doing anything wrong That's as of lately. Yeah, he had a very good stay, weight cut. Staying in the gym, yeah. fighting the fight. Everything's looking good. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
I, I'm glad to see this side of John Jones as well. It's only going to help his legacy later and he's on. He's not old by any means. What is he? 32 he's years 32. old. He's 32. He's right. 32. Yeah. So he's still got a lot of fight left. I saw him over at the radio studio in LA here the other day. The guy's yeah. still a mountain oh, yeah. of a man. It's he's not like beast. he's, you know, it's, it's not funny like he's going because at this stage in his career, when John first came into the UFC, he was the young man. He was, I think, the youngest UFC champion ever, around the age of 21, 22 years old. Now he's been in the game so long. He's 32 years old. He feels like he's the old <laughs> man now. He That's feels right. like he's the guy that has the the target on his back in every new young up and comer is coming after him now and that's just the feeling you get being in the spotlight for so long but he's not old by any means but I do feel like the division is starting to say you know what there is a way to beat John Jones you have to bully him you have to pressure him you have to get in there and outbox him let's talk about uh, another big fight this weekend Valentina Shevchenko and, and her dominance with a TKO dominance what did you see there I don't know if dominance is even an understatement <laughs> I mean honestly I'm watching this word. fight and I said this is the most flawless performance I have ever seen by any fighter man or woman on the ground, even in guard, she's laying in those elbows. She was throwing the kicks to the liver. She, she has a flawless performance. The thing that makes Shevchenko so dominant is she doesn't allow any openings for mistakes. Why is she spinning Ooh, back heel click? That's the one. one point right there. That's Crazy the one. Kick. She does so well. She gets the takedown. She's good everywhere. When she came into the UFC, she was mm -hmm. known highly regarded more of, of a striker. And now she's rounded out her game. She's been she, she's dominant in the wrestling. She's dominant in the grappling, the ground and pound, the cardio. She doesn't allow any openings for, she doesn't give any mistakes to allow openings to get countered. And, and, and I, I'm a, a huge fan of Valentina Shevchenko. She showed her dominance here. The division is very, very far away from catching up to her. Right. As, as we just talked about with John Jones, they're starting to catch up to John Jones. Right now, Shevchenko's in a shallow division, and she is the alpha male for sure, the alpha female. Well, uh, Shevchenko was hanging out with Ariel Hawani earlier today, and she mm -hmm. said she wants that. That third fight with Nunez. So wow. what do you think about a, a rematch there? You know, you know that, that's a tough one for me. These girls have fought twice, twice already, already, okay? Yeah. Amanda Nunez, probably highly, highly regarded as the GOAT in women. She's yeah. beaten everybody, and she has beaten Shevchenko. Does Shevchenko deserve a, a third fight at this point? She deserves it. Yeah. I just don't know if I want to see it. Shevchenko has finally found the proper weight class for herself. She's in the flyweight division. She is dominant. This is where she should have been a long time ago. She was fighting up in weight at Bantamweight, finding the bigger girls like Amanda Nunez and not having success. She's in the right division. She doesn't need this fight unless she wants the super fight. But again, I don't need to see this fight. It's up to her in the future. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and special content, subscribe to ESPN+.